Hello, I'm Benjamin Samstein. I'm the Chief of Liver Transplantation here at Weill Cornell and the Surgical Director of the Living Donor Liver Transplant Program at New York Presbyterian. Today, we're going to be talking about living donation in liver transplant. Today, during this video, we will be answering the following questions. Who can benefit from living liver donation? Who can be a living liver donor? What is the evaluation for a donor like? Do donors live normal lives? And how long does it take for a donor to recover? Currently, there are about 16,000 people on the waiting list for a liver transplant. And unfortunately, because there are not enough livers, about 1,500 people will die each year while waiting, and an additional 1,500 people will be removed from the list because they're too sick to receive a liver transplant. Living donation for liver transplantation has several benefits. Among them are that it enables transplantation before the recipient becomes too sick. The surgery can be scheduled and planned rather than happening at a moment's notice. Of course, the safety and full recovery of the donor is most important. To ensure that happens, we provide a comprehensive evaluation of the donor. The program at New York Presbyterian is one of the largest and most experienced in the United States. Today, as we discuss living donor liver transplant, it's important to understand what are some of the barriers or why living donor liver transplant isn't done more commonly. Among the most common reasons is that the recipient is uncomfortable to ask, that the recipient may be concerned about donor complications or even donor death. The recipient may be concerned about the donor's recovery. And of course, there are always concerns about cost and how will this be paid for, for both the donor and the recipient. Another consideration is that sometimes people are told that they're not sick enough to receive a liver transplant. Sometimes they believe that their MELD score is too low for a liver transplant. But it's important to consider that patients can have complications from liver disease that are not reflected in their MELD score. These complications include ascites or fluid buildup in the belly, confusion or encephalopathy, and infections that can occur anywhere in the body. It's important to understand that the average MELD score for a living donor liver transplant is 15. Regardless of your exact MELD score, it has been shown that at every MELD score, people who receive a living donor liver transplant do better than those who are waiting on the list for a deceased donor. This was a study performed with nine different centers that perform living donor liver transplant throughout the United States, and people were followed based on their MELD score at the time of their living donor liver transplant. Those who had a living donor liver transplant did better at each of the points, showing that earlier access to transplantation basically saves lives. So who can be a living donor? In general, the donor must be in good overall health. They cannot have diabetes or fatty liver disease. They have to have a blood type that is compatible, although not necessarily exactly the same as the recipient. They have to have an altruistic motivation for donating. In other words, they cannot be donating for the purpose of financial gain. And they have to be between the ages of 20 and 60. During the living donor evaluation, the donor will meet with a nurse educator, a hepatologist or liver specialist, a surgeon, an independent physician or internist, a social worker, a psychiatrist. They'll have an MRI and a series of lab tests to ensure the safety of the surgery. The goals of living donor evaluation are to provide comprehensive education to the donor, to make sure that the risks are as low as possible, to ensure that the donor feels informed about the donation process and the recovery, and to make sure that they have an adequate caregiver and support plan to enable their recovery. So what do we know about the risks of donating and donor hepatectomy? Well, first, it's important to understand that it is a real operation with real risks. Unlike donating blood or bone marrow, um, there are serious risks that come along with donating, even the risk of death. There are also complications that donors can face, such as a bile leak, incisional hernia, or pain. 
At the same time, it is important to understand that the vast majority of donors have no complication whatsoever. And although bile leak, incisional hernia, and bleeding can happen, they are relatively uncommon. At our program, to date, there have been no deaths. What can living donors expect, both in and out of the hospital? In general, donors spend between three and six days in the hospital. The average recovery time is about six weeks. Approximately 50% of donors return to work in four weeks, and more than 75% of donors return to work in eight weeks, and nearly 100% by 12 weeks. People are often concerned about the costs of donating. Donor testing, surgery, routine visits are covered by the recipient insurance. Travel, lodging, and wages are not covered by insurance or the transplant center. There is a National Living Donor Assistance Fund which can pay for some travel costs for some donors. New York State allows organ donors to deduct up to $10,000 on their state income taxes for travel loss wages related to organ donation. Some people want to know how we decide whether or not we'll be using the right side or left side of the liver. The right lobe of the liver has 60% of the mass of the liver. The left lobe has, on average, about 40% of the liver mass. How do we decide which lobe to take? If the recipient is physically large or has a meld over 20, usually the right lobe is used. If the recipient is smaller in size and has a meld less than 20, then usually the left lobe is used. We are using more laparoscopy in living donation. All donors to children under the age of eight are performed with a full laparoscopic technique. Approximately half of all donors to adults are performed with a full laparoscopic technique. This slide shows the incisions that are used for laparoscopy. For a full laparoscopic donor hepatectomy, the drawing on the left shows an artist's illustration of what the incisions look like. The operation is performed with the laparoscope through the small incisions on the upper abdomen, and then the lobe of the liver is removed through the larger incision in the lower abdomen. The picture on the right is an actual donor who donated part of his liver to his child. This slide shows the incision for what is called the hybrid technique, where part of the operation is performed laparoscopically, and then we make an incision from the breastbone to the belly button to divide the liver and remove it before implantation. The purpose of this video is to give a brief introduction to living donor liver transplantation. Obviously, the discussion of your specific case should be done with your healthcare provider. But we think we have shown that there's a significant need for living donors in liver transplantation. Living donor recipients do better than deceased donor recipients on average. Most living donors recover fully without complications. And the safety of the donor and excellent outcomes for both the donor and recipients are our top priorities at New York Presbyterian. My donor lives in another state. How would the donor evaluation work? How long would the donor need to stay in New York? And what is the follow-up? Donors can do blood type, check their liver blood tests, submit a questionnaire about their health history, and sometimes even have an ultrasound of the liver where they live. These tests will identify most issues preventing donation. If all of those things are normal, the donor needs to visit New York Presbyterian Hospital for a two-day evaluation. If approved for surgery, the donor needs to stay for about a month in New York between the immediate preoperative testing, surgery, hospital stay, and ensuring that they're safe to return home. We have donors follow up at two weeks postoperatively, six weeks, three months, and one year. There are phone calls at six months, two years, and donors are required to stay in contact with New York Presbyterian for five years. My children have offered, but I don't feel comfortable since they have their own lives. Watching anyone that you care about, including a parent, get sick is difficult and painful. Adult children who are capable of making a mature decision should be respected for their maturity and courage. The donor evaluation is thorough and aimed at making the donation as safe as possible. If my caregiver wants to be my donor, 
Do we need separate care teams? The donor and the recipient do need separate caregivers. The donor usually goes home four to seven days before the recipient. The donor cannot drive for several weeks usually and needs someone to get them to their appointments. The recipient needs their own person who can visit them in the hospital even after the donor has gone home. If I get a partial liver graft, will it grow in me and the donor? The liver has a remarkable ability to grow. Most of the growth occurs in the first 6 to 12 weeks after the donation. Within 12 weeks, each person will have a normal sized liver, although there will only be one set of vessels for each. If you want more information, please don't hesitate to contact our center. You can learn online at the following websites or call us directly and ask to speak to a living donor specialist. I want to thank you for your time. I hope this video has been helpful.